Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we will use a free Blender add-on, PolyQuilt. It offers useful tools to create low poly models and to build ray topology easily. It is similar to the built-in poly build tool in Blender, but this one offers some more features. This add-on has been updated and now works with the latest Blender version 4. The first step is to download the add-on. Visit the GitHub page, link is in the description below and download the latest version. Go to preferences and install it like any other add-on in Blender. There are settings to assign custom shortcuts but we will leave them as they are for now. So here I have a UV sphere object. You can use any other model. Press Shift A and add a plane object. Go into edit mode. Turn on snapping and change the type to face. Next in the viewport overlays, turn on re topology setting. This will allow us to see the re topology faces which we will create. Press A to select the single plane face and press X to delete it. In the left side toolbar, you should see the poly quilt button. If you long press the button, a menu will open which will show additional tools which we can use. We will select the first main button. I am just going to change the viewport matte cap material so we can see the results a bit better. Now click on the surface to create our first quad face. You can move the face, vertex or edge. To create a new face, simply hover over any edge. It will turn yellow. You will see a small arrow, drag it out to create a new face. You can press A two times to deselect the faces. Now we have created three faces. The color of your retopology quad faces may look slightly different. If you like to make the colors more darker, then you can change them in the blender theme. Open preferences, in the theme section go to 3D viewport and in the face retopology color setting you can change it. I have increased the alpha value to make the faces more visible in the editor. All the faces created will snap to the surface of the object that is below. Press hold the shift key. We will switch to the brush tool. If we hover over any edge, then we can also see a preview where a next face can be created. You can restart Blender if it is not showing. Here you can click to create additional quad faces in this way quickly. You can leave the shift key now. To make any cut in the face, like the knife tool in Blender, simply click over any edge and click to the next point. You will need to go from edge to the next edge to make cuts, otherwise it may not work. You can also move any vertex to auto snap and auto merge to the closest vertex point. It will show a small circle where it will merge. To delete any face, edge or vertex, long press left mouse button over that part. It will turn red and get deleted. The next feature is one of the most useful tool of this add-on which is the smooth relax brush. It can happen sometimes your mesh topology may not be with a clean edge flow and a bit messy. So by holding shift key and using mouse brush over the surface to make the topology with clean edge flow. You can use this tool on any other model as well to fix the edge flow. Now let's look at some other tools on this add-on. The edge loop tool will allow to move the entire edges or create new faces from the edge boundaries. The loop cut tool is useful for adding edge loops in the topology. Using the smooth relax brush alongside can help to keep the faces more evenly spaced.
The knife tool works in the same way as clicking over the edges to make cuts. The delete tool allows to quickly delete faces by drawing over the typology. The seam tool is useful for marking seams for UV unwraps. Holding control will mark the entire edge loop or can remove the seams as well. There is a menu on the top where you can access some other settings like changing brush size, strength. The same settings are also available in the side panel. You can press N to access them in the tools section. Here you can assign custom shortcuts. For example, I have a shortcut Ctrl plus left click for edge extrude. It works a bit differently from the default action. This shortcut allows to extrude a face from the vertex point or any other point on the edges rather than only limited to dragging from the arrow which I showed before. In case you want to make symmetrical typology, make sure to enable X symmetry option and then you can easily create faces on both sides. One problem you may come across is that if you make a cut with symmetry enabled, then it is not going to work correctly as it snaps at the wrong edges. I am not sure if this is some issue in this add-on. You can see I am making a cut from one side but there is a face being created at the back side. So to fix this issue, it is better to disable symmetry during knife cut operation and work on one side only. After making the cuts, select all faces, go to mesh menu and use the symmetry rise option to make the typology same on both sides. Use the plus axis to minus axis. You can then enable symmetry again just only during making cuts you will need to disable. Let's exit the edit mode. You might not see your new typology as it is right below the surface of the base mesh object. To see our new topology you can either isolate the plane object or add a shrink wrap modifier which we will add in the next step now. You can change the mat cap if you like. With the plane object selected on which we created our typology, add a shrink wrap modifier. By the way, if you are interested to know, I am using a free add-on modifier list here to bring back the feature to show all modifiers in the same panel which was in previous versions of Blender as I like it more. In the shrink wrap modifier, change the wrap type to project, change the snap mode to above surface and in the target, select the base sphere object. Change the offset amount slightly to bring up the topology plane. Make sure to check positive negative options as well. In this way, we can see our topology results in object mode as well. Let's check a few more tools in Polyquilt. You can delete entire edge loops as well. There is a tool for it. You will have to assign a custom shortcut. You can also use Ctrl R loop cuts and use the mouse wheel to control the count of the loops. Hold Ctrl to slide them in the middle. Remember to use Shift Smooth Brush to evenly space the faces. Next to the Poly Quilt button, you can see another button. It is Quad Patch Tool used to make bigger patches of faces by drawing lines. It does not show the line as we draw over the surface. It shows after we release the mouse button. There is a setting menu in the corner from where you can control how many points or faces will be created after drawing a line. 
only the drawing line is not visible which makes it a bit difficult sometimes otherwise a useful tool to generate topology over bigger areas. And this is the overall working of this add-on. Rest of the tools you can test for yourself and customize. So the next part is going to be a small time lapse. I am using a model that I have sculpted in Blender. If you like to use the same model then I have provided a link for it in the description below. You can download the obg file and import it in Blender. The process will be same as before. I will add a plane object. In the edit mode I will delete the face. Turn on snapping with face. Select the polyquill tool. Turn on the re topology setting and enable symmetry as well and start building the faces. Please note I am quickly building the re topology faces here to keep this tutorial short. Otherwise you should take your time. Use the symmetry rise tool whenever the mesh topology does not get subdated on both sides. It is better to build re topology in small sections and then connect them with each other. Shift click to use the smooth relax brush to maintain a clean edge flow of faces. Here I am using the edge loop tool to add edge loops. In the object mode I will add the shrink wrap modifier just like as shown before. This time I will add a 2 level subdivision modifier above the shrink wrap modifier to check the topology flow. Right click and smooth shade to make all the newly created faces same. Here is the final low poly version which I created. I kept the amount of faces quite low here but you can increase to add more details to it. Since we added a subdivision modifier you can create a high resolution clean topology model as well by increasing the subdivision levels. Keep it to maximum to 3 or 4 otherwise your performance will be affected. In the edit mode you will have easy control over selecting loops. A few tips to keep in mind. You can turn off retopology setting when you don't need it anymore so the colors are back to normal when working in edit mode. If you have added a subdivision modifier on your object during retopology, your performance may feel slow. So turn the subdivision modifier off. Turn off symmetry during making cuts or knife tool operations. As I have already shown that sometimes topology is not updated on both sides. So use the mesh symmetry option to fix that. Zoom in to merge and remove any extra vertices. Remember to assign custom shortcuts or add tools to quick favorites to access them fast. Last of all, you can also use the polyquilt tool to quickly create shapes. Like here, I am adding faces to a plane in edit mode. And from here, you can continue to explore more workflows with this add-on. I hope you find this video useful. If you like to see more in the future, then please consider subscribing, giving this video a like and turn on notifications. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.